Okay, let's start with my introduction. I am Delhi Raj Maharjan from Kathmandu, Nepal, and I have been working in IT since 2002. And I'm working as an Oracle database administrator since 2006. I have done OCP 9i, OCP 10g, 11g, and 12g. And I have successfully passed Oracle certified masters in Oracle database 11g. And I am OCI Architect Associates, OCI Developer Associates. I have done Oracle 10G and 11G RAC certification. And I am founder of Nepal Oracle User Group. And right now I am working as leader for the Nepal Oracle User Group. And we are conducting a lot of webinars. We are conducting webinars every weekend. And right now I am working as a Oracle Database Consultant for Pythian Canada from last two years. Okay, agenda of this webinar is we will go through the introduction of Terraform. Within introduction, we will go through infrastructure, IT infrastructure, infrastructure as service, and automation tools, Terraform, its advantage, installation, and configuration. After that, we will see the Terraform basic commands, Terraform init, Terraform validate, Terraform plan, apply, Terraform sort, and Terraform destroy. And at the end, we have a demo. So let's begin the in general meaning of infrastructure. If we say about the infrastructure, then it means a physical infrastructure. So for the general people, the infrastructure means uh, flyovers, buildings, bridges, and roads, right? And in the same way, if we talk about the IT infrastructure, then IT infrastructure means a compute servers. They may be virtual or some bare metal servers. And the infrastructure, IT infrastructure means storage that may be a file storage, object storage, some sort of block storage, and network appliance, right? So network appliance means router, switch, bridge, load balancer, and all. And this is an era where we are growing infrastructure rather than building infrastructure. Let's say a few years back, if I have a two compute server, two servers, and if I need to make them full, basically I need to build them, right? So at that time, I need to purchase additional two servers. And after that, I need to mount them, mount them to rack or some sort of Sometimes you need to assemble, you need to insert the hard drives and all this stuff. You need to assemble them or, and mount them. And after that, you need to do network connection. You need to set up a firewall rules. You need to set up a, you need to define routes and all this stuff. And once the network is configured, we need to install OS. And on top of that, we need to software install off. After that, it seems a little bit finished, right? So basically it's a long running task and it's basically a building an infrastructure. But at this moment, means using cloud, if I have a two compute instance, if I need to make them four, then within a few clicks, I can make them four, right? So basically I'm growing the infrastructure and someone on my behalf is building it for me. So basically cloud provider, Builds infrastructure for me, and for me, it's it's a little, it's something like growing, right? And once my job is done, I will just destroy them within a few clicks, and I will pay for the amount of the time which amount which which time I have been used it, right? So basically, this is the era where we are growing infrastructure, and someone on our behalf is building them. And here comes the infrastructure as a code. So basically we have an infrastructure, right? So within a few clicks, we can grow them, but that is not enough, not sufficient due to in this era. So basically in this time, so what we do is we define all our infrastructure in simple file or files and some automation tool will build it for me. Let's say, I have a requirement where I need to build 50 servers at midnight in my midnight and do some tasks. And 
at around 4 a.m. in the morning, I need to destroy them. So basically, if even the it's a process of growing, I need to wake up, I need to log into console, I and I need to create all these 50 servers and do the job. And later on, after four or five hours later, I need to destroy them. Like, right? So it's become a tedious job. So to make it easier, to make to automate them, we have an infrastructure as a code. So in case of an infrastructure as a code, we will define all our resources in a file or files. And let, let's say we can do schedule it in a cron job and cron job will do, will configure all the servers on my behalf. And I will do my job. And once all these jobs are finished, then the cron job itself will destroy them. So that is the infrastructure as a code. So Infrastructure as a code is the process of managing infrastructure in the configuration file or files. And it allows operator to use a configuration language to author configuration file. So we have a basic, some sort of a configuration language. In case of a Terraform, we have a Hashicorp configuration language, HCL, to write a configuration file. And it contains definition of our desired resource inside the file. So whatever the resource we need to perform a job, we will define it in a file. And best part is it supports almost any provider. So AWS, GCP, Azure, even Docker, OCI, and Alibaba, whatever the provider is, it will serve. It supports. And it is it automates the creation of those resources at the time of apply. So before creation, there are a lot of steps. So there is a Terraform app plan, which will show list all the resource that is being created during the apply. So you have a lot of opportunity to review your changes and all this stuff and once you are satisfied then you will apply terraform you will execute terraform apply and the resource get created and there are a bunch of automation tool in the market right now we have ansible terraform say puppet salt stack and cloud form cloud formation and let's jump to the terraform Terraform is a tool that is released by, that is developed by HashiCorp and the code is open source. That means that you will get the source code of the Terraform itself and it use method push. So there is no agent or any sort of software required at the cloud end. You just need to install Terraform on the computer. You may say it as a Terraform server and it will push the configuration to the cloud. And the approach it uses is a declarative. So we have a two type of approach. It's a procedural and a declarative. In case of a procedural approach, what we do is we define all the commands and commands in proper sequence. So sequence is sequence does matters. And in case of a declarative, we just define whatever the resource we need and the sequence doesn't matter. So let's take an example. We need to create BCN first, then only subnets inside a BCN, right? So either you define VCN on the top or subnets on the top, it doesn't matter. So sequence doesn't matter at all. And Terraform is written in a Go programming language and it is very easy to install and it it is an orchestration tool. So orchestration tool means it pro, it is used for provisioning of the resources rather than configuring software. So in case of configuration management, we it is used to configure the software after the provision has done. Oh, and in case of the orchestration, it is used to provision the resource. And the architecture it uses is client only and the infrastructure it uses is immutable. So basically we have a two type of infrastructure, mutable and immutable. In case of a mutable infrastructure, what we do is if we need it, need any changes, we will upgrade or change within the infrastructure itself. Let's say I have a I have a compute instance with MySQL version seven and I need to install MySQL version eight. Then what I do is I un uninstall the MySQL version seven or I upgrade the MySQL version seven to eight on the same existing infrastructure. But in case of an immutable infrastructure, what we do is, if I need to upgrade my MySQL version from seven to eight, then I will destroy entire compute instance 
and create new instance with a MySQL version 8. So this will avoid the breakage of the upgrade and all this stuff, right? So let's say I have a hundred machines where I need to upgrade the MySQL version. Then there are a huge chances that around 50 or 60 computers may have a breakage due to the upgradation and all this stuff. So in case of an immutable infrastructure method, what we do is we completely destroy the my the compute instance with the MySQL version 7 and we create new instance with a new compute instance with a MySQL version 8. So that won't break, that won't cause a breakage in the application itself. So in the same way, we have a tool called Ansible. It's it's a configuration management tool and safe, puppet, salt stack, they are both, they all are configuration management tool. And we have another orchestration tool that is cloud formation and it is owned by AWS and it has a closed source. So basically uh, it, the source code itself is not released to public and the method it uses is a pool. So it needs some sort of the software at the cloud end, which will pull the configuration rather than push. So it uses a declarative and written in a JSON. So JSON and it, it is some sort of installation is a little bit hard because it is completely owned by AWS. And let's get something about the Terraform. So Terraform is the infrastructure as a code offering from HashiCorp. HashiCorp is an organization which maintains the Terraform. And it is an automation tool for building, changing, and versioning infrastructure safely and efficiently. Here, safely and efficiently, these keywords are very important, right? So let's say I have to deploy, I have to configure provision 100 compute instance every day and destroy them. So if I have to do it manually, there are a lot of chances where I miss something someday, right? So because it's creating a hundred compute instance with the click, number of the clicks is little bit tedious stuff. So in case of a Terraform, we used to, we define hundred compute instance in a file and it configures in exact same way every day. So it is very safe approach for the compute instance provisioning. And it does efficiently because we can use, we can schedule the job itself in the clone job or something else or scheduler or something else. So I do not have to wake up at the midnight or some sometime. And I have, and it is, it can be executed efficiently. And Terraform is a configuration, Terraform has a configuration files which describes to Terraform the component needs to run a single application. So that means whatever you define in a single configuration folder, single configuration, it will deploy in a single time. An infrastructure team uses configuration language called the HashiCorp configuration language. The language that is being used to write a Terraform configuration files is known as a HashiCorp configuration language. And the basic workflow for the Terraform is, at first we will define a scope. That means whatever we need, we will define them first. We will analyze our requirements and all this stuff and we'll define all the resource that is required. Once our requirements is clear and we have defined our requirement, we will author them, means basically we will write them in a HashiCorp HCL language. We will write the, all the configuration file. Then third approach, third workflow, third step is to initialize the configuration. That means we need to download the plugin for whichever provider we use. So if I'm using it for the AWS, I need to download the AWS plugin for the Terraform. And after I have initialization, then I will plan and apply. Basically in the stage plan, what it will do is it will read the configuration file and list out all the resource that is being created once you execute Terraform apply. And once you execute Terraform apply, all your infrastructure get created. And these are the three basic advantages of using Terraform. First of all, it is platform agnostic. So it can manage a heterogeneous environment. It can manage AWS, GCP, OCI, Azure, ETC, and within with the same workflow by creating a configuration file. So you need to create a configuration file. The 
exact workflow is same for any provider and best part is that it supports multiple provider in a single configuration file a next advantage is state management once you apply once you create the infrastructure it will manage a state file which will store all the conf all the resource that is being created and the best part is that this state file can be stored locally or remote at a remote location because whenever we have a multiple developers working for the same configuration file same configuration then it is little bit impossible to store the state file locally because in that case we need to store it on every developer's computer and there is a lot of chances of a miscommunication and all this stuff so we can store the state file in the remote location at that time and state file is a source of truth by which the configuration changes are measured so if any change is made to the configuration file let's say if i if i create a, if i provision a compute instance with the pm standard 2.1 shape and if i need to change it to the pm standard 2.2 then it will compare with the state file and list out the whatever the changes that will be result in the new state and the third advantage of using terraform is the operator confidence so the whoever is using the terraform he or she can use it with the full confidence because the user will be prompted to review the purpose change whatever the change is going to result in in the end state so it will be prompted to review so you will get a list of the changes before you get applied and user must affirm the changes so he or she must type yes to get the change applied or else terraform will not apply the purpose plan so you get the plan and you are asked to type yes you are asked you are asked to confirm it affirm it but you didn't affirm it then it will not get applied so the installation part is installation is quite easy so and you can install terraform for any operating system so in my right hand side there are a list of operating system basically is that it is a print screen itself of the installation page so you can install it for mac os previous data 2 bit 64 bit and uh, even arm and linux 32 bit 64 bit and arm open bsd 32 bit 64 bit solaris and windows and simply go to the url https www.terraform.io then download the downloads.html page and select the desired operating system and the architecture uh, once you download it you need to extract the compressed file it you will get a zip compressed file and once you extract it add the location to the path environment variable either or you just copy the terraform binary to the executable folders folders where the executor files are located and once you are done the core part is that you need to configure cli version of the cloud provider let's say if i am going to use terraform for the oracle cloud infrastructure oci then i must need to download the oci cli version and configure it so basically in case of the configuration you need to define your user oci id tendency OCI ID, your region, your compartment ID, and all these things need to be configured beforehand using the Terraform. So before using Terraform, it should be configured. And configuration, let's talk about the Terraform configuration. So in configuration means a set of files used to describe infrastructure in a Terraform. So configuration is a files, file or files in a Terraform. And Terraform use a declarative model for defining infrastructure. So that means that you need to de declare the whatever the resource you need and the sequence doesn't matter. And configuration files are made up of a resource with setting and values. So basically there is a resource block where we define a resource and within a resource block, we will define attributes and values. Let's say if I need to define a VCN, then within the VCN resource block, I will define CIDR address and display name and all these attributes within the block. And configuration file can be in either of two formats. So either you can use HashiCorp configuration language or JSON. So both are supported. 
and in case in case of a HCL format, you should save the file in. <coughs> excuse me, sorry. You should save the file in .tf extension, or if you are going to use the JSON format, then you should save the file in .tf .json extension. And both the configuration .tf and .tf .json is accepted. So whenever you execute Terraform plan and Terraform apply, it will basically read all the files with the extension .tf and .tf .json for the resources. Let's see the example in the right hand side. I have listed all the files in the BCN configuration folder. So I have a output.tf where I have defined the outputs and I have defined providers.tf where I have defined providers and variable.tf where I have defined variable.tf. Okay. And I have a BCN.tf where I have defined the very the resource BCN. So BCN.tf variable.tf, provider.tf, and output.tf are the configuration files. And we will get more detail about these files also. These are the state files and these are the plant files. Okay, let's go for the provider block. So the provider block configures the named provider, either it is AWS, OCI, Azure, or something else. So in our demo, we will use a OCI. Let's see the example. Here is a provider block. So we will start with the keyword provider and the name of the provider. So in, in my case, OCI is the provider because I am going to use Terraform for the Oracle Cloud infrastructure. And within this provider block, we have to define a lot of attributes and the values, right? So I need to define which tendency I am going to use, which user I am going to use, and the fingerprint of the user, I need to define the API signing keys and all this stuff and the private key path, the location of the key path and the reason where I am going to define and deploy my infrastructure. A provider, a provider is simply a plugin that Terraform used to translate the API interaction within the service. And Terraform can interact with any API. So basically, if you are going to AWS, you need to download the API of AWS. And for other, you need to download the API. So you can represent almost any infrastructure type. And multiple provider blocks can exist if the Terraform configuration manage resource from the different provider. So if you are going, if you are using OCI and the AWS in the single configuration, then it is also supported. The second is our resource block. The resource block defines a piece of infrastructure. Let's see the example. So in case of Oracle BCN, this is the resource block I have defined for the Oracle BCN. So in, I should start with a keyword resource, then this is the keyword for the BCN, OCI underscore core underscore BCN, and then it comes a name of the resource, Terraform PCN. And within this resource block, I have defined CIDR block as 10.0.0.16, DNS level as Terraform BCN, and compartment ID as a var.compartment ID. Basically, I have defined it. I'm, I have been using it from the variables itself. So var.compartment underscore OCID. And the display name I have defined for this BCN is a Terraform BCN. So a resource might be a physical component such as a compute instance, PCN or something else, or a logical resource such as an application also. So we can define and resource for the application also. The resource block has a two string before the block of code. So once I have defined the resource, then I have a two strings and the resource type, this is my resource type, and this is the name of resource. So in my case, resource type is OCI underscore core underscore BCN, and the name of resource is Terraform BCN. And this is the syntax for the resource, for defining resource, resource, resource type, and resource name, then the list of attributes and values. Next, we have a data block. So data block is quite interesting. Whenever we need to use something that already exists outside of the configuration or something that is already exist in the in the computing in the cloud so we will use a at that time we will use a data block so 
a data block requests the Terraform read from a given data source. So let's say if I need to get information about the availability domain. So basically we will not create the availability domain within the configuration, right? We will use the availability domain that is already exist. So in that case, I will use a data block. So if you see the example, I will start with the data keyword and type of the data, OCI underscore identity underscore availability domain. And this is the name of the data block. So it could be anything. And within this data block, I have defined the compartment ID. So in case of compartment ID, I have defined the tendency ID itself and the AD number. So I am interested in first availability domain details. And data source allow data to be fetched or compose, compute for use. And use of data source allows a Terraform configuration to make use of a infra information defined outside of a Terraform. Let's say if someone has already defined the VCN and I need to reuse, I need to use them to create a subnet within the VCN. So in that case, I need to use a data block to read the information about the existing VCN. So in this case, the VCN has been already created by some configuration file or it may already exist and I need to use them. So I define the data block and the OCI underscore code underscore VCN. So this is the keyword. And this is the any name I can give. So I for the easiness, I, I defined it as a Terraform VCN. And within this data block, I have defined compartment ID. So where do my VCN exist? So it, it's within this variable values, means var dot compartment OCI ID. And what is the display name of the Terra display name of the VCN that I am interested in? So it is a Terraform VCN. So Terraform VCN has been already created and I need information about the that VCN. So I have used the data block. Okay, we have another output block. So output block is used for the return values. So if you are you if you have ever worked with the programming language, then we can use we we define a function and it has a return value, right? So the output block it's very similar to the return value and this is my the this is my output block where i have started the block with the with the keyword output and immediately level means emit the word following the output keyword is the name of the output so pcn id is a name of the output block and value equals to oci and so core underscore pcn and the name of the vision in terraform VCN and its ID. So basically using this block at the end of the apply, I will get the VCN's OCI ID. So the value argument takes an expression whose result is to be written to the user. So this is the value that gets returned by this block. Okay, we have a provisional block. So basically provisional block is used to execute some command either on local machine or the remote machine. So local machine in the sense, local machine in the sense where we have, we execute the Terraform apply command. So if I execute the Terraform apply command on some sort of the Linux machine in my, let's say in my laptop, then local exe EC, the provisional with the local exe EC keyword executes the command itself on my laptop only. And if I execute this provisional block with the remote EXEC, then the command get executed on the compute instance that is being provisioned. Let's say, let's say if I need a IP address of the compute instance that is being created and need to store them in local computer on my laptop, then I need to use the local EXEC command because it invokes a local executable after the resource is created. And if let's say if I need to install Apache on the newly configured compute instance, then I need to go for the remote EXEC because it invokes a script on the remote resource after it is created. And it is used to run a configuration management tool installing software inside a compute instance. So if I need to install Apache and configure Apache, once the instance is ready, then I need to go for remote EXEC. And we have uh, remote EXEC in the demo itself. So 
we will see at see in the demo and here comes the input variables so how we can define the input variables so we can define input variables within the configuration file itself so this is the block to define the variables in the configuration file variable we, we need to start with the variable then the name of the variable and within this variable block we will define the default value so by default reason we'll have a value us as per one and we can include we can use a variables using the hyphen var option also so whenever i actually execute terraform apply i will use a var hyphen var option which has a values reason equals to us as well so in this case this is the variable and this has this is the value so the calling variable value is very easy so let's see the provider block provider oci user ocid equals to variable user ocid and reason equals to part dot reason so it will directly get the value us as one one and there are another way of defining variables also we can define the variable in variable value pair and we need to save them in a terraform dot tfr file or any name with dot auto dot terraform dot tfr as a any name should be prefix with the auto dot terraform dot tfr and we need to define variable and value within the file and if we are not going to use this standard names and we will define we, we we want to define our own file name then we can use a hyphen var file equals to and the name of the variable files and we will use a variable and value pair so in this case we can use a multiple files also so in this case my file one and my file two are uh, files that containing that contains variable and values and another option we can use this is the most common method we can we use that is using the environment variables so in case of a environment variables every value variable name should be prefixed with the tf underscore bar underscore so in case of i need to define a region variable with the us as one hyphen one then i need to export variable environment variable tf underscore bar underscore region equals to us as one one and the last option we can use the interactive prompt option so let's say i define i use the environment variable within the configuration file but i haven't defined and assigned any value to it so in that case whenever i execute terraform apply then it will prompt for the value so in this case i have used var dot reason inside the configuration file but i have not used I have not initialized and defined value for it. So basically it prompt for the value. So I can I can type the value for it. So this way we can provide the variables and values for the Terraform configuration. And the another important is the state file. Basically it stores state about your manage infrastructure and configuration. So everything you have configured, everything you have deployed, you have provisioned will be listed in the state file itself and it is used by the terraform to map real world resource that is in the cloud to your configuration so it get maps it sits in between the real world resource and the configuration and we can define a state file locally and at a remote location so in case of a local state file it is stored by default in the local file with the name terraform.tf state and it resides inside the configuration folder and we can store in the remote location also in case of a remote location we need to define a data block data terraform remote underscore state we can keep any name and we should define the backend equals to http config equals to address this is the object storage address where i have stored the terraform stuff terraform state file and the advantage of using the remote state file is if we have a lot of developers working for the same configuration file then storing it in the remote location is a best way to use it and we have a basic terraform commands these are the few basic commands right so we have a terraform init where we 
install, we basically download and install the Terraform plugin. So, sorry, it's a cloud provider plugin. So if you execute Terraform in it, then it looks something like this. So basically it will download plugin for the provider OCI. So I'm using it for OCI. So it's downloading the plugins and all this stuff. And once it is done, Terraform has been successfully initialized message, you will receive. And second, we have a Terraform validate where it check for any syntax error. So if you execute Terraform validate, it will check any syntax error. It won't check for any logical errors, right? So let's say if you have something, some error in the uh, CIDR block, let's say if you didn't define the proper CIDR block, it won't check for it, but it will check for any syntax error. And this is the message you get once your all the syntax is valid. And we have next command we have is a Terraform plan. And optionally, we can specify the plan file name. So basically, whenever you execute Terraform plan, it will display the plan only. And if you define the Terraform plan hyphen out and the Terraform plan output file, then it will store the all the plan to the file also. So it looks something like this. So I'm executing Terraform plan hyphen out bnc.plan. This is the file where I am planning to store the all the plan output. So it will display. I'm going to the end state of the is the creating this file, this BCN with the CIDR block 10.0.0.16, and compartment OCID is this, and the display name is this and this, right? So basically, all the signs with all the value with the plus sign means it is going to be created. So in this case, this resource is going to be created once I execute Terraform apply. So next command we have is a Terraform apply and the plan name. So in case, sorry. So if I specify the plan file name at the end of Terraform apply, it won't display the plan and the confirmation and it won't ask for the confirmation. If I apply this command only, Terraform apply only, then it will regenerate the plan and you are asked to review them and confirm them. And if you add the plan file name at the end of the Terraform apply, it will just execute the, it will just apply the resource, whatever you have created. So in the, in this case, uh, B, my BCN get created and at the end, the BCN ID is game being displayed. And once we apply the Terraform, we are, once we execute Terraform apply, my resource is being created and we can execute Terraform show command to display the existing configuration that is being created. So Terraform show displays something like this, resource OCI core underscore BCN, and the name of the VCN is Terraform VCN, CIDR block is this, compartment is this, DSCP and all this stuff. And at the end, whenever my job is finished, I can execute Terraform destroy to destroy whatever I have created. So in this case, you will see the minus sign at the front of the resource. That means that this resource is being destroyed at the end. So it looks something like this. And uh, once you are, once, you are happy with uh, all this stuff. Once you are happy with the plan of the action, then you need to confirm it to the to destroy the resources. And we have an option to use with the Terraform destroy that is auto approve. We can use the auto approve option just not to prompt and not to confirm and just destroy them, right? So. This uh, option auto approve is very useful when we define this command inside a script, right? So if you execute Terraform destroy from a cron job, then the auto approve will not prompt you for the confirmation. It will directly destroy it. Okay, let's go for the demo. In the demo, we will create VCN. So BCN looks something like this. We have a BCN with a CIDR 10.0.0 slash 16 and the name of the BCN is Terraform BCN. Once I create a BCN, I will create two public sub, sorry, two subnets. That is one is public subnet and another is private subnet. 
And in public subnet, I have a CIDR 10.0.0 slash 24 and private subnet had, has 10.0.1.0 slash 24. And once the subnet is created, I will create internet gateway, NAT gateway and security list. And all these network, once all these network tasks is complete, I will create one compute instance and install Apache using provisional block and remote EXEC. And I will create one web page, one index page, and will access web at the end of the page. And at the end, we will destroy them. So let's go to demo. Before jumping to demo, I would like to show the configuration files these are the configuration file I am using for BCN and subnet and compute. Right now I have uh, five configuration folder, but among them I am going to use BCN, subnets and compute. And within a BCN configuration, I have a pro provider block, providers.tf file where I have defined the provider block. So in case of provider, I have a provider OCI and I have defined the all the required attributes values for the OCI provider block. And after that, I have a variable.tf where I have defined all the variables that I'm going to use in the configuration. And I have a vcn.tf where I have defined resource vcn, right? So resource is the keyword, OCI core underscore vcn, this is the resource type, and this is the name of the resource block. And we within the resource block, I have CIDR block, 10.0.0 slash 16 DNS label compartment ID and display name. And finally, I have output.tf where I have defined the output block with the VCN ID as the output block name and the value OCI core VCN dot Terraform VCN dot ID. So it, it basically displays the name, displays the OCI ID of VCN that is being created. And in the same in the same way, I have a subnet block. I have a DSCP.tf where I have defined the DSCP block internet gateway. I have defined the resource for the internet gateway. I have a NAT gateway.tf where I have defined resource NAT gateway and provider block in the providers.tf route table. This is the route table and security list. Security list. I have defined resource block security list for the inside the security list.tf and Within this security list, I have defined egress and ingress rules. So basically what I am going to do is I am allowing 22 SSH port and I'm allowing 80 port. So to access the HTTP from them and I am basically allowing the ICMP. That is the pin package using this uh, security list. So I have a subnet.tf where I have defined data blocks for the availability domain and data blocks blocks for the BCN and I have a two resource for the subnets that is for the public subnet and the private subnet and I have a variable to TF where I have defined the variables and the same way I have a compute configuration folder where I have defined the compute.tf with the name in this compute.tf file I have defined variables called instance OCPU instance image OC OCID. Basically, I am going to create compute instance with Oracle Linux 7.5 OS, and the size of the compute instance is 50 GB. And uh, VCN I am going to use is Terraform VCN, and subnet I am going to use a public subnet. And availability domain is the availability domain that has variable index plus one. So basically, I am going to use the second availability domain, available AD2. And in case of this uh, resource instance, uh, resource for the OCI core instance, web is the name of the resource, and I'm going to create one compute instance, availability domain is this, and the shape is this, and the PCN details, these are the VCN details and the source and all this stuff, right? So once the computer, the compute instance is provisioned. I will execute provisional block with the remote EXEs. That means that it will get executed on the compute instance that is being created. And these are the commands that is being executed inside the compute instance that is created. So basically, I have uh, saved the 
message this instance was provisioned by Terraform in etc MOTD file. I will install HTTPD Apache and this is the index page. We, the index page is being created and I will allow a HTTP service in the firewall and I will start the service and I will configure, I will enable the, enable the service so that it will get started at the startup. Okay, let's jump to the demo. So this is my console. Let's begin with the console first. If you check the VCN, I have no VCN at all right now. So there is no VCN and there is no compute instance right now. And I have uh, configured Terraform server within the Docker container. So let's start the Docker container. Docker container, ls hyphen all. Start. So, so Terraform hyphen server is the Docker container name I'm going to use. Docker, yes. So the container is already started. So Docker exec interactive hyphen TTY. Data from server and being passed. This is the command I'm going to use. So I have configured Terraform for the user Terraform itself. So I'm going to switch user to Terraform. Right. Okay. This is the environment variable I have been using. So basically, I have removed few characters for the security reason in this file. And the proper file is in env answer bars dot one. This one is the proper file, but this is the way we define the environment variable. So in case of the tendency OCID, it need be to be prefixed with the TF underscore var underscore, and it should be the environment variable should be something like TF underscore var underscore tendency underscore OCID. And this is my tendency OCID. And the same way you we can use for the user OCID finger, private, uh, private key, and the regions and compartment IDs. Let's execute the real one. Okay, let's check EF hyphen var underscore R E G I O N. Okay, so the variable get executed. Okay, let's check the configuration. Terraform CT configuration. Okay, I have the all the con all the configuration in this location. So let's jump to the VCN directory configuration directory. Okay, let's see. I have a four files that output.tf, provider.tf, variable.tf, and the PCN.tf. And I do not have a plugin installed, plugin download and install over there. So the first command I need to execute is a Terraform init. If you check, I do not have a VCN at all right now. So basically, when we execute Terraform edit, it will download the plugin from the provider that plugin for the provider that we are going to use. So in my case, I'm going to use OCI. So it is so it download the provide plugin for the provider OCI. And if you check the configuration directory, then you will see dot Terraform folder with the plugin, right? CD dot Terraform you will see the plugin folder so that's all so once the terraform init is done let's execute terraform validate and check for the for any syntax okay my syntax is perfectly fine there is no syntax error in the configuration itself okay next step is terraform plan we can only execute terraform plan only or we can optionally specify output file where it stores the plan itself and that plan. So here it is. So it's basically going to create one VCN with the name Terraform VCN and the display name is something like Terraform VCN. 
so let's okay we have a execute we have an option to just execute terraform apply if i execute terraform apply only then it will list the plan again and it will prompt for confirmation let's see this one yes when i execute the terraform apply it will it it displayed the plan once again and ask me for the confirmation let's type no cancel it and let's go with the plan file pcn.plan so if we specify the plan at the end of terraform apply it won't display the plan and won't ask for the confirmation it just get executed yeah vision is created so if you refresh over here yeah terraform vision is created so if you check this vcn then i do not have a subnet at all right so let's jump to creating the subnets so terraform folder is not here also dot terraform folder is not exist here so i need to go for the terraform in it terraform validate no syntax error terraform plan hyphen out subnet dot plan okay it is going to create so it is going to create one dhcp one route table one security list with this egress and ingress rules and one internet gateway and one net gateway one private subnet and one public subnet let's apply with plan file yeah it's done yeah we have two subnets ready and we have a internet gateway uh net gateway data from that and everything ready so let's jump to compute instance so in case of a compute instance compute configuration folder i have already dot terraform folder that means the plugin already exists i can reuse it so let's jump directly to terraform validate to check for any syntax error there is no syntax error terraform plan okay so it is going to create a one compute instance and display name of the compute instance is web zero it is created in availability domain 2 us as bond hyphen 80 hyphen 2 and this is the sss public sss key that is being added to the compute instance the shape of the compute instance is bm.standard.2.1 and in case of a bnic the display name is primary bnic and display uh, sorry assign public ip equals to true host name level equals to web zero okay Okay, creating compute instance may take around five minutes. So let's jump to slide again. And these are these are the resources I have been used. I used for the creating the these slides and all this stuff. And if you want to learn about the installation procedure, I have created a blog that is 
oraclecloudadmin.com and the install oracle for install sorry install terraform for oci in linux.html you can go for it this is the installation procedure so i have created a lot of screenshots so it could be easier so basically you need to download the oci cli first and once you install download it you need to configure it oci setup config with the command oci setup config you need to specify um, user oci id tendency oci id region and api signing keys and all this stuff and once oci is configured this is the way to create way to add an api signing key and just download terraform whichever the os you required or whichever the architecture you required either it's 32 bit 64 bit so in my case i have download 64 bit linux and i i have used the duplicate command to download it i have extracted it using unzip and once i have extracted it i have moved it to the bin directory and i at, at the end i execute terraform hyphen version and it is displaying version so basically it is working and the best part of the hasi crop right now is that the learning is totally free you can just go to the site learn.hasicrop.com slash terraform and you can learn it for complete totally free so if you are planning to go for the certification exam then you need to spend around 831 minutes and it is totally free at all so the best part for, of it is that the learning is totally free right now okay let's see the compute instance provisioning okay uh, until now the provisioning is on the progress and once the provision is completed the provisioning block get executed with the remote exec basically it first at first it connected it it connect to the compute instance in the public using public ip and the user ocp sorry not ocp it's a opc oracle public cloud opc at using sss and it's trying to connect trying to connect and connecting to remote host by using sss sss and connecting 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 and it get connected right if you check this block then it get connected and once it get connected it tried to execute yum but the yum is already running so it tried again and again 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 and at this stage yum get executed right so it basically resolved the dependency and start downloading http package http tools and all dependency package and it installed everything everything get installed and once all the package HTTP packet is installed, then it create a page. This is index page, and it create a symbolic link link for the startup and all this stuff. So, and at the end, it displayed the public IP. So if I SSS to this public IP, sorry. PC or a public cloud at the rate. Yes, I can SSH it. And if you notice, then this is the message we write in the MOTD file, right? So it gets printed every time I log in. And we have configured Apache server over there, so it should be working. Yeah, this is the index space. Yeah, this is the demo. And once I am done with it, I can execute Terraform, sorry, Terraform destroy. So whenever I execute Terraform destroy, it will display for the, all the resource that is being destroyed. So basically it will destroy the OCI core instance with the instance name web zero. And these are the, all the values of the compute instance so either you can just type yes or you can add hyphen auto approve to get it 
destroyed without prompting. Okay, destroying the compute instance. Let's jump to the slide once again. <clears throat> and this is my blog site, dillydba.blogspot.com. And this is the blog site I'm using for cloud related post. And we are very soon we are launching blog.cloudnepal.org. And we have a YouTube channel in the name of the Nepal OUG. So I request everyone to subscribe it so that we whenever we update any video to the channel, you get you will get notified. And if you want to learn about the networks and all these protocol numbers and all these stuff, then just go to this side. And finally, all the codes I have used for the configuration, Terraform configuration is available on this GitHub location and you can download and use them. So, before Q and A, let's see the destroy part. Is it done or not? Okay, uh, Harish, I'm extremely sorry. I didn't see the message earlier, but I think the terminal, okay, so you mean to say the terminal size, right? So uh, I prefer to use the terminal and OCI console side by side so i have minimized it oh, and sorry i you may need to zoom and see the and the, it, it's a pretty easy command so it is not a big deal for us so please show the compute instance before destroying it oops post you are late because i have already destroyed it i have already destroyed it so Okay, let's click on it and give a try. Nops. Okay, here is the information of the general information of the compute instance that is created and right now in the process of the destroying, right? So I have used the PM instance 2.1, image, OS images, Oracle Linux 7.5, PCN that is being used as Terraform, OCI Cloud and all this stuff. So post, I hope I have replied your question, right? Okay, the instance is terminated. So guys, if you have any question, then just type it on the chat window. Okay, the compute instance is destroyed, right? The destroy compute, let's zoom it. Basically, I am used to with this size of font, so I even do not have idea how to increase the size. Let's, let's try. Profile, default, chat. And text, it should be a text or color text, text. Okay. So in this case, the what the compute instance is destroyed. So in same way, we can destroy the subnet, subnet, data from destroy. So it will list all the objects and ask me for the confirmation, right? Just type yes and it will be destroyed. So if you check the VCN, then all the all the subnets within the VCN is destroyed, right? No, nothing that. So if you go for the VCN, data from destroy and auto. 
sorry. APP ROV. Yeah, it's a matter of a three to five seconds, right? Yesterday, actually, yesterday I tried to de delete the VCN using the console, and trust me, it took around ten to fifteen minutes because it because there is a lot of dependency of the browsers and all this stuff, right? So from the command line, it is always quick and easy. Okay, guys, any questions? So can you share your uh, GitHub link? 